I like Mustang. I bought my first in 65, bought again in 68, and I'm on my way to buy again right now. Sorry, you'll find that Mustang just isn't Mustang anymore. Today, a name's not enough. Let's stack Mustang up against the new Barracuda and see what Ford has done. With first Maverick and now Pinto in the small car field, Mustang obviously needed a new pasture, but this meant a lot of grooming had to be done. Like stretching the car's overall length and wheelbase, widening it, putting in larger engines, putting side impact beams in the door panels, concealing the windshield wipers, to catch up with last year's Barracuda. Ford added a new body style to the Mustang line, an exaggerated fastback. They call it sports roof. Well, it's not the Mustang I've known, but it does look sort of jazzy. Let's see if you could really live with all that jazz. The car's design replaces the usual C-pillar with this huge chunk of sheet metal because the fender panel runs right up into the roof. It blocks the driver's view of the right and left rear. You can't tell if another car's there. Better hope other drivers are alert and cooperative when you want to change lanes. You're not much better off at the front. The low seat and sharply slanted windshield leave you wondering where the car's front is. It's like coming in on a signal beam without the signal beam. This, believe it or not, is your rear visibility. It must be among the most limited of all American production cars. Mustang Mach 1 and Boss 351 are available only in this roof line. In the lower picture, here's the view you have through Barracuda's rear window. That's a big difference. Let's review model lineups. Barracuda offers a two-door coupe. Mustang has no comparable model. Both offer a two-door hardtop. The sports roof model is exclusive to Mustang, which is fine with us. Remember that uh, limited rear visibility? Both lines offer convertibles. Moving up a step in luxury, there's Grand Coupe and Grande, both two-door hardtops. In sportier, performance-oriented models, Cuda and its big Hemi engine version come as two-door hardtops and convertibles, while Mustang's Mach 1 and Boss 351 are available as two-door sports roof hardtops only. Well, show me how the regular hardtops stack up. Okay, here's Mustang's front-end treatment. Nothing particularly new. Single headlights, see-through honeycomb grill, relatively narrow bumper. Barracuda does it differently. Dual headlights, all-new grille with six scoop-styled openings that peak toward the center. Deeper, heftier bumper protection. Cuda offers a grille color-keyed to any of nine body paints, and all Barracuda models have optional elastomeric bumpers that match any of six paints at the front, any of four at the rear. Mustang's best is the standard black grille and a color-keyed urethane front bumper, available only on the sports roof Mach 1. The rear bumper is chromed. Ford offers no protection for the vulnerable rear quarter metal. Mustang's optional body side moldings stop halfway back. Every parking lot's a hazard to Mustang. Full length side moldings are a Barracuda option. Now let's talk about comfort. Even with Mustang's new length and width, Barracuda still makes more room for people to sit and ride comfortably. Here's an example. Barracuda and Cuda hardtops offer this optional, no extra cost bench seat with bucket backs. There's even a folding center armrest. With the armrest up, there's room for three in front. Mustang has no such option and offers bucket seats only. But for $76 extra, you can get this molded plastic center console. The top doubles as an armrest, but the result is still a two passenger seat with a permanent obstruction in the middle. Barracuda's standard instrument panel has the controls and reading centered for the driver's convenience. A well-organized cockpit arrangement. Gauges read out engine temperature and alternator charge conditions. In Mustang, controls that should be grouped together are spread all around the instrument panel. It's distracting, divides the driver's attention. Engine temperature and alternator charge are indicated only by warning lights. Information that's too little and too late if trouble develops. And Mustang's heater defroster and radio controls are down low and over to the driver's right, making him shift his eyes from the road and stretch past the transmission shifter. That's no way to treat a man when he's busy. Barracuda puts these controls right in front of the driver. Mustang has an optional instrument panel, standard on Boss 351, with gauges replacing warning lights for oil, amp, and engine temperature. Yet these gauges are set way over to the right, a driver has to look away from the road and then lean over to read them.
Barracuda's optional rally instrument panel has complete instrumentation, including tachometer, trip odometer, 150 mile per hour speedometer, and rally clock with sweep second hand, yet keeps everything in front of the driver so his attention isn't drawn from the road. And notice the handsome wood grain trim across the full length of the panel. All you do to lock or unlock Barracuda's door is flip the lock lever set inside the front armrest. So convenient. It's more work to lock or unlock Mustang's door. You twist and reach way back. Try unlocking the passenger door. You have to stretch out and reach around behind the seat back. Let's give your friends a break and consider how these two cars stack up for passenger ease and comfort. Mustang's front seat back release is way down at the lower center of the seat back. Ladies particularly find it troublesome to get in, and it's embarrassing to an owner to be kidded about such an awkward feature on his new car. Barracuda's bucket or bucket back bench seat releases at a touch of your toe. The release is on the outer edge, easy to see and to operate. Wouldn't you uh, rather make it this simple for your friends? Mustang has a peculiar rear seat. This hump makes it virtually impossible for anyone to sit in the middle. Barracuda's seat is flat. Well, you've made a pretty good case for Barracuda so far. How do the engines compare? Now, let's see. Barracuda offers five regular fuel engines, from the super economical 198 all the way up to a 383 four-barrel. Mustang offers only three, and its top regular fuel V8 falls 60 horsepower short of Barracuda's. In premium fuel or performance engines, each offers three choices but Mustang hasn't come close to matching Barracuda's 446 barrel or the unbeatable Hemi. Well, you've compared a lot of things. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty, huh? How about cost? As I said before, Mustang just isn't Mustang anymore. The relatively economical, agile Mustang you knew is gone. But their bigger, more expensive new Mustangs aren't coming through with Barracuda-type value and owner benefits. Let's see where the real value is. Here's the new Barracuda Coupe. As either a 6 or V8, it costs less than the lowest-priced Mustang. Same story with the two volume cars, the two-door hardtop V8s. Barracuda costs less. Suppose I want a little more luxury. Uh, how do the Barracuda Grand Coupe and Mustang's Grande match up? Again, the Barracuda costs less. Car versus car, Barracuda starts lower on price and maintains a price advantage, model by model. And Barracuda goes higher on the performance scale. Barracuda offers more convertibles. Let's point out some other important differences between the cars. Barracuda has much more effective brake lining area, 52% more. This means surer, safer stopping with longer brake life. Barracuda's brake linings are bonded, Mustangs riveted. Bonded linings last longer. When Mustang's linings wear down to expose rivet heads, the brake drums can be scored and will require refinishing. All Barracuda models have torsion bar front springs and rugged five-leaf rear springs. This combination produces a smooth and controlled ride under all driving conditions. Responsive in turns, steady at super highway speeds, comfortable over bumps. Heavy duty and extra heavy duty suspensions are standard with Cuda and Hemi Cuda models. All Mustangs come with coil springs at the front, four-leaf springs at the rear. Coils, by their very design, have less springing action than Barracuda's torsion bars. A so-called competition suspension is standard for Mach 1 and Boss 351, but a veteran driver reports that compared to Barracuda's ride, the Mach 1 tested has a harsh and jarring ride. The car wallows around in turns like a boat, even with a special suspension. Comparing transmissions. Barracuda's console-mounted torque flight has the slapstick with gate check that lets you speed shift through the gears. But Mustang's select shift has no lockout gates, so you could go into neutral or reverse. As we've seen, Barracuda has these important advantages over Mustang. Lower prices. An economy two-door coupe that's considerably under the lowest-priced Mustang. More interior roominess, front and rear easier in and out for driver and passengers, more selective engine choices from rock bottom economy up to all out performance. Barracuda's advantages over Mustang continue with 52% more brake lining area for surer braking and longer lining life. 
more functional instrument panels that give the driver more information without taking his eyes off the road, full body side protection with moldings that run the entire length of the car, more practical optional transmissions that keep you in the proper gear. Mustang still has its nameplate, but that's not enough. The way Barracuda is coming through today. Chrysler Clement, coming through. Chrysler Clement.